Now we've got two guys who know a little something about music, a little something about Hall of Fame. Terry Stewart is going to conduct Tony Picosa. Terry Stewart has been the president and CEO of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum for more than a decade. Since opening in 1995, the museum has welcomed more than 8 million people with annual visitors coming from all 50 states in the U.S. and more than 100 countries. After years of traditional business, Terry joined Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, and others at Marvel. He said some of the best jobs ever. Along with his busy schedule at the Rock Hall, Terry serves on numerous music and nonprofit boards. We don't know how many polka songs are in his iPod, but I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> Terry? I won't take long. Everybody can sigh relief on that one. But um, it's an honor to be here tonight, and for all you honorees, Mr. Miller. Um, for someone who's a fairly much a newcomer here, only been 13 years Albert. And Albert asked me in my first luncheon interview 13 years ago, Terry, do you think you can adjust to Cleveland? I said, Albert, I'm from Lower Alabama. I think I'll be just fine. And I say that because tonight you hear the stories about this great city and the folks are being honored here. So it's a blessing to be part of a little bit of what happens in this city over the last decade or so. And before you get all weird about me and Tony, the rock world of polka, I'm going to help you out historically with your music <coughs> legacies. Um, in this town, the great history of Cleveland polka, and I will say that correctly every time, Cleveland style polka, what you don't know is that there were many, many polka musicians who played on rock and roll records. In fact, a big hit record came out of this town by a gentleman I had the pleasure of knowing named Eddie Platt. He even played it for me. He had the second biggest version of the song Tequila. It came right out of this town. Now, most of you don't know that, but it was, it was very important. And in fact, one of our inductees, Ricky Nelson, his first huge hit, Bebop Baby, was the demo for that record that was sent to Los Angeles, was done in a polka studio by a polka band and left here and went on to be made famous by him. So the connection is not that strange. Uh, my motto has always been, at least since I figured it out about 20 years ago, and it took me a long time, to do what you love and chase your dreams. You'll never be happier. You'll never go to work in a day. Every day's a weekend. All those bromides you hear. And I thought I'd done a pretty good job of it. But once I got to know Tony, I realized that he's my idol. And uh, he has really managed to master this particular art. Uh, his love of Slovenian culture and polka music, Cleveland style polka music. By the way, Tony tells me that, so you'll understand, help me if I'm wrong, that Cleveland style is the M-O-R, and in the record business that means middle of the road, smooth, I don't want to say smooth jazz today, but smooth polka. Doesn't have a lot of herky-jerky stuff, and there are no trumpets, is that right? More, mm -hmm. more or less. More For, or Cleveland. Less. For Cleveland style, exactly. But his love of this heritage, this music, has given him what I think is a blessed and dream life. And it all started when he thought he'd like to be on the radio. Doesn't sound like much, but when you hear about what's come out of that, it's pretty impressive. Results. This gentleman has the longest running daily radio show in America. 50 years <laughs> and artists and movement uh, leaders in the movement that started the folk movement in the late 40s and then went on to be part of the civil rights movement, Oscar Brand, still has a show on, I think, 50-something, 60 years, but he only does it once a week, so I don't count that. That's nothing compared to two hours a day, right? Yeah. Uh, he is a radio station owner. Shows you, again, the power of America and what you can achieve here. He's also in the Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Pretty impressive. Tony's also an entrepreneur, and again, as because of his love of this culture and, and this music, he's as a co-owner of a travel agency, he has actually sort of proselytized the world. He's taken this music in almost any country or continent you can think of and to, told them what Cleveland style folk is and showed them how to do it through cruises and other tours and trips of that nature. 
Uh, and, you know, this 50-year radio program, it doesn't seem that Tony can do anything on a short-term basis because he started the Old World Festival, which is, how many years is that? 20-something. Yeah. And then he's got one that happens in this room, right? In this, in this hotel. Every Thanksgiving. Every Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving Festival, which has been going... Here for 20 years. And? Since they built the place. Well, it's, it's been going on for Since, years. yeah, almost as long as you've been on the radio, right? Exactly. Almost 50 years. He hasn't got this short term figured out, you know. <laughs> but maybe his real coup is that in 1987, he formed the American Slovenian Polka Foundation, which led to the founding of the Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame in Euclid. Now, I said he's my idol. I get to work at one. He founded one. He created one. This is the founding chair of the Polka Hall of Fame, which is a great museum in Euclid. If you haven't been there, I urge you to go. And it's so much a part of the heritage of this city. Uh, you know, this is a rock and roll city to a great extent today. Many people forget that in the late 40s and the 50s, Polka records were top 10 records. And that's the, that's the era that, uh, that Tony remembers and part of what really generated his interest in this music. Um, and awards, as if you tweet or you um, text, the only thing you can say is OMG. Oh my God. Um, over 100 awards and proclamations, including, I love this one, he was the youngest ever Slovenian man of the year at age 25. I don't even know how you managed to do that in such a short term. There's not much else I can say except that um, I didn't talk much about his civic and, and his other uh, works in the neighborhoods, which are also bountiful because I'm such a music cultural guy. But I'd like to sum it up by the fact that this award to me and the privilege of being here is, a, is about a lot more than just the music. Yes, this is a gentleman who has managed to help preserve one of the more important cultural art forms, particularly for this part of the world. And uh, he embodies that cultural diversity that we all know about this city. But the thing that also makes Tony a wonderful man and makes the city such a great place is in the process, he made a big difference in this town. And making a difference in Cleveland is something that I aspire to and I hopefully all of us aspire to every day. I uh, would like to end up telling you that.